guys welcome back to another video in today's video we're going to do some soup red pea soup my way no guys it's going to be a little different because i just found a lot of stuff in my fridge and i say i just gonna put it in there so i'm gonna put some kale um some okras and also i have in my fridge as well from 19 how long rehydrated and not using them um some veggie chunks this you can leave out the veggie chunks but i'm just gonna put it in here simply because it's in my fridge not doing anything um guys if you want to continue watching this video don't forget to give it a thumbs up comment if you like it and subscribe to our channel let's get straight into this one all right everyone so what i have here is four cups of water to this i'm going to add in my red peas that have been soaking from overnight And some salt we want to start off with the piece first guys because I want it to be cooked right and I want it to cook good and also a scotch bunny pepper poking a hole in it some thyme and scallion now if you want to cut up the scallion guys um, and have everything cook out in the pot while the soup is going on fine what I'm going to do is to just add some now and a little bit later add some more seasonings, right? So we're going to cover the pot guys and cook our peas. What I've decided to do is to season my veggie chunks. I'm going to cook it off in the pot first simply because I want it to have more flavor. I can't just put it just like this in the pot to, um, with the soup. I don't think it's going to have any flavor to, to, to build with, you know? So what I'm going to do now is to add in some all-purpose seasoning. Some salt. Put more of this. So it can have a flavor to start with. Like you, you, you can't just put something bland in the pot and expect it to be flavorful, right? Alright, guys, going in with a little oil, just a little bit to saute our veggies. And here I'm going to add in a little bit of garlic, reserving some to put in my soup. Some onions, and now our veggie chunks. As you can see, the scallion already cooked out, and our peas, our peas is more than halfway done. Ninety percent done, guys. I think fifteen more minutes, and we're good to go. In this time, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to knead my um, dumpling dough. Adding some salt to our flour. And I'm using wheat flour, guys. One of the reasons why I am making my dough before anything else is because I want it to rest before I knead it and put it in the pot. So you want to create like a nice tight dough. Okay guys, this is it now. I'm going to just rest my dough for a few minutes and then I return to it. Okay, so what we're going to do is to add in our chunks. What I'm also going to do, guys, is to just remove these. I thought they cook out already. I look tired. Me just have to remove them. Yes. And also the scotch bonnet pepper, because you know the hard food is going to go in it. I don't want it to burst in the pot. We're still going to allow the peas to continue to cook some more. At this time, I'm going to add in my ginger. And you can see that I chop up everything so fine. Because I don't want to just put in a, a, a thumb of ginger and then somebody just bite down on it. It's something that I don't like to do. So if you chop out everything nice and fine, um, it cook out in the pot. And that way if somebody even bites on a little piece of ginger, it's not so bad. 
We're going to add in some um, bay leaf as well. And here my remaining garlic. Also going to add another piece of um, another scotch bonnet pepper. Just for the flavor. And here some more scallion. Now guys, working with our dough, we want to make the dumpling in some nice bite size. Guys, you can see already how much dumpling I'm getting from one cup of the wheat flour because I'm making them very small. See how lovely everything looking already, guys? Dropping our dumplings. What you want guys, you want everything in the pot here to be bite sized, right? You want to make sure you give it a stir so the dumpling don't stick on the pot bottom and we're good to go here guys. At this time I'm going to wash my food, my ground provision. And this is um cocoa. So guys, what I like to do when I'm peeling my food, I like to put it in some water. Nice yellow yam we have here, guys. Cool. I have my carrot here. preparing our okra just want to remove the top of it there and you know guys the okra will give the bad and um, the soup somebody it's not gonna be too slimy all right this the okra will only add body to your soup so if you don't want to add the, the cock soup or the vegetable soup mix the okra will do its job or if you don't want to use the okra as well, you can use sea moss. And just rough chop them, alright? We have our carrot.
adding in all our food as well as my carrot and okras guys what I was looking for is this scotch bunny pepper I don't want it to burst guys if it bursts out of mercy I don't know how I would manage because these peppers are super hot let me show you how the peas is looking good to go guys good to go now I'm going to add in my kale beautiful beautiful look at that man beautiful guys beautiful we all know that soup is a one pot meal with filled with a lot of nutrients all of those carrots the okras the ground provision cook out in the pot there so people who are skeptic eaters you know you can give them these kids good for kids good when you have cold and flu yes man now remember guys you see how quick the kale quilt down in the soup we don't want to overcook it right nice and nutritious soup we have here guys look at the texture and remember your soup can contain any vegetable you have on hand guys if you don't have anything i have here you can also swap out and put in what you feel like putting is soup so you can't go wrong with soup the only thing guys is just that you want to make the soup cook out to get a nice body so you want to make sure you cook your soup for like um an hour and a half to get that nice rich body right And remember also no cock soup was used in this no soup mix or anything it's just the okra that um, allow it to give it that nice rich body and if you're cooking a soup if you're cooking your soup here guys a next um, tip you want to bear in mind if your soup not thick enough and um, enough what you can do is to just get some of the potatoes or any of your creamy food like the potato or the cocoa or the dashi now you want to make sure you just crush some of them together and then you just mix it back out in the pot that will help your soup too to thicken up right so this is it guys i'm going to turn off my heat you see my kale still looking glorious and green in there that's what i want i mean i want it looking any darker than that look at our nice soup guys look at that texture oh my god very nice soup we have here wow guys wow would you look at that beautiful mm. i hope you give this recipe a try guys thank you so much for watching this video until next time bye